Let's get into the word together. And uh, I'm going to just share some things that the Lord has been putting in my heart. And I pray it'll be a blessing to you. Amen, amen, amen. I am um, starting a new series today, and I'll continue it for the next several weeks. I don't even know really where it's going, but I really know it's a call of God. As we start talking about next level living, and we're talking about favor, and we're talking about all this stuff in our lives, we have to understand that God has a calling for your life. Everybody. And, and, and yet, I don't know if it ever happens to you, but there are times in my life where I wake up and just go, man, what am I doing here? Like, what am I doing? Like, what's going on? And, and it, can, it can at times feel like a just a little overwhelming. Like, why am I here? And I want you to know God's purpose and calling for your life is a detailed call. It is detailed. It is tailor-made for you. It is specifically designed for you. And I'm going to give you a working definition, okay? So th this will be a little working definition, and, and, and you can put this into your life. And they're going to put it on the screen here, so you might want to take a picture of it uh, or write it down. God's calling is God's invitation for me to live His plan for my life. God's calling is God's plan. It's God's invitation for me to live His plan for my life. And uh, it's personal. It's unique. He has plans for you, and that plan has details. It's not random. And I see a lot of you aren't writing anything down or doing anything. And I, that's cool. You're grown adults. You can do what you want to do. But I'm just encouraging everybody, get over yourself and write some notes. Find something that I say that means something and write it down. If I say anything that's kind of close to being like an, an encouragement for you, write it down, man. You know what? I, we found out last week that in a survey, most of the people that are in heaven took notes. And uh, you say, well, where, where, what do I do? <laughs> you got it. She just got it. I love you. I love you. You're the best. It'll get better as we go along. But um, I'm, just, I'm just saying, if you have the DC app, Destiny Church Naples app, you can go on there, and there's a sermon outline every week that you can follow along. But I just encourage you, even though you have the outline, as God speaks something to you, write it down. As a verse is preached that grips your heart, go ahead and underline it in your Bible, mark it, and so that you can go back and look at it, and it'll be a real encouragement. People often ask me, what's my calling, Pastor Greg? What's my calling? A lot of teenagers ask, what's, the, what's my calling? What do I do? What's, what, what, what's my purpose? And, and what do I do? And, and then the, the question is, how do, I, how do I discover it? How do I discover my calling, and how do I know it? And I want to assure you that God has a unique calling for your life. It's for every person in the room. And I want to look at what it looks like to live out that unique calling. The Bible is real clear that each one of us has a specific calling. And it's found in Romans 8, 28. And most of you Bible readers and Bible people who have been around church for a while could quote Romans 8, 28 because we use it a lot of times to justify the bad things that happen in our lives. Okay, well, it's bad, but you know, God's going to use it for good. But there's more to it than just thinking that bad things are happening. So Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good. You got to finish the verse and you got to look at it. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. I mean, that, when you begin to... Uh, unpack that and look at it. the key thing to look at is you have been called and it's directly linked to you, to his purpose the NIV and I'm going to read a few translations so you can hear it in different translations the NIV says this we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose the amplified and I, I love reading the amplified and the, the way it describes things, and it amplifies says this, and we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God, to those who are called according to his plan and his purpose. The Passion Translation. We are convinced that every detail of our lives is con continually woven together for good. For we are his lovers who have been called 
to fulfill his designed purpose. This is unique. It's specific. And he has this, this direct call to you and I. And the word called in the Greek is the word kletos. Kletos. K-L-E-T-O-S. And it means God's invitation. It's like God is inviting us to discover our unique assignment. It's this special plan that God says, hey, it's that kletos. It's, I want to bring you in and I want to show you. It's the big picture where God says, I want to invite you into a world that you've never seen. And man, so often we get so, so bogged down with trying to find the, all the details and we're missing the opportunity to just step out in faith and do what he's called us to do. God's saying, I want to reveal calling to you. I want you to discover your unique purpose. God initiates the call to each and every one of us. And here's what we know. Not everything in our lives is good. And not everything in our lives is God. There's stuff that happens that isn't good and it isn't God. And he's teaching us. He's causing all those things. This is the picture of grace. This is like putting on glasses that all of a sudden now you see through eyes of grace that God's causing all those things, tragedies. He's causing bad things, good things, confusing things, brokenness, addiction, everything that we've walked out in our flesh and that we're experiencing in our daily lives. This is the picture of grace. God causes all things to work together to accomplish his calling in our lives. God causes it all to work for our good as only, only as we Respond to his call. Listen, I, I, I started this thing when we started the fast, and how many of you were really, really encouraged with this year's fast, doing, doing the fast? I mean, I was just so encouraged, humbled, like I felt like I, I just I cry so easy right now. I'm just, there's, there's such a sweet place in the Lord. I would, Pastor Robert Norcross is here, him and his wife, Carolyn. Welcome, guys. Good to see you. They're from Canada. They're pastors in Canada, and they're gifts from the Lord. Just give them a great big welcome. But uh, Robert and Carolyn are, are snowbirds that come every year, and this, this year, when Robert got here, he said, let's go have lunch, our breakfast together, and we went together, and we were just talking, and he's real bold, and he gets into my life, and he looks me in the eyes, and he goes, where are you at spiritually? Like, how's your spiritual maturity? Where are you at? And without any hesitation, I could look him in the eyes and say, Robert, I believe that I am in the best place spiritually that I've ever been in in my life. This fast has brought me into such a place of hearing and responding, and I feel so much faith in my heart, faith for you, faith for this wall, faith for this church, and I really sense that God is bringing us all into this place of favor and blessing, and that 2022 is going to be our year to step into the things that God has been planned forever, waiting for you and I to step into it, and I really sense that in my heart. The whole Bible, and, and, and during this fast, the Lord began to speak to me and to encourage everybody to read through the Bible this year. Like start in Genesis, start somewhere with a reading plan and read the entire Bible this year. We do soap every year and we get through a lot of the Bible and we're going to keep soap going, but I'm asking everybody to read through the Bible in a year. And I started this thing and uh, I've just been like, like crazy going at it, man, trying to get through the Bible. And I have, I'm trying not to watch television, anything, and anytime I have a minute, instead of flipping on Facebook and seeing what everybody's talking about and all that stuff, I'm just going right to the scripture, and I've been just reading, and in my car waiting, it's like just going, reading. And I've, I've got through Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, I'm all the way down, and I'm in the 25th chapter of Jeremiah. And I'm, I'm going through and I'm going to read this whole thing through. I've been, I'm trying to stay diligent at it. And I'm praying that in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to finish the Bible. And I want you to do that this year. Because all through the Bible, what I'm learning, and I, I found out for the first time, Bill, I've read Isaiah so many times, but I've never read it. Isaiah 1, all three through 66. And so I, I was reading it, George, and I was just, I was going through that Bible. And I fell in love with Isaiah. Wow, the whole New Testament is in Isaiah. Like when I was reading it, like from 
chapter 1 all the way through. Romans has always been my favorite book of the Bible, and I love the book of Romans, and I love Romans 8. It's probably my favorite chapter. But man, I fell in love with Isaiah. And what I'm finding as you look through the Bible and read through the Bible, here, here's what you're going to discover. The whole Bible is about God calling, people responding, and then discovering why they've been called. And man, we get it so messed up, man. We get it so messed up. We, we, we want to know the why. Like, why am I calling? Why do you want me to do this? When God said, that's not how I laid this thing out. I call, you respond, and as you respond, I'll show you why, and I'll give you the power to accomplish it. And that's the encouragement that I want everybody to get as we go through this study together. And in, in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, you can flip over there with me, and I'm going to just show you, and that, that word that came forth mentioned this exact calling uh, for Abraham. Abram was... Uh, God, in, in, in Genesis 12, verse 1, now the Lord had said to Abram, get out from your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land that I'll show you, and I'll make you a great nation. I'll bless you, and I'll make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I'll bless those that bless you. I'll curse those that curse you. In you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Look at verse 4. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. Lot went with him. And look at, the, look at that last part. Abram was 75 years old when he departed for Haran. He was 75. Age doesn't matter. It's not about your age. It's about you being obedient and stepping into your calling. And even though Abraham was old and he started late, late in life, he responded to that call of God. He left the familiar, didn't know where he was going, but God, God said, hey, if you'll do this, as you go, I will empower you to do this and to see it come to pass. You look at the life of Moses. God called Moses and said, I want you to lead an entire nation out of bondage. I want you to lead them out of the captivity of Egypt, an entire nation. And there was about three million people. Moses was a reluctant leader, as are many of you. Because in your heart, you don't feel you're qualified. You don't feel you have enough knowledge. You don't think you're smart enough. You don't think that that's too big. If God would have showed me back 14 years ago what we would look like today, I probably would have pulled out. Amen. Huh? I probably would have said, I, 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 I can't do that. I'm not qualified for that. And that's where many of you, of you are at right now in your life. You're looking at your age. You're looking at your, what, what, what's happened in your life. And you're reluctant to step into the call. And I, I understand that. Moses had every right to be reluctant. He didn't have the gifting. He didn't have the, cap uh, the capabilities. He wasn't eloquent in speech. And every time he spoke, he stuttered. He was a reluctant leader. But every time, eventually, God got his attention and Moses was able to respond to the call. Aren't, aren't you thankful that, 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 that God calls twice and three times, four times? I mean, you think about it. God encountered Moses at the burning bush. But it was years after that and years after Moses trying to convince God that he wasn't qualified that Moses finally stepped into going into up there and, and speaking to Pharaoh and saying, let God's people go. I'm praying God will get your attention in this series and, and, and help you to step into your life calling. Once Moses responded, he was able to discover the power that was able to, uh, that was available for his life. I mean, I, I'm just telling you, for me, I, God's had to speak to me sometimes, multiple times to get my attention. I'm going to tell you, even last Sunday in the service, when we had that amazing service, you know, the, the, the storms came, and there was about half the crowd was here last week, but man, the internet views were like up. Everybody was watching it online, so I appreciate you when you can't be here watching it. That was great, and everybody's watching now. Thank you for tuning in. But at the end of the service last week, as I was sitting here, we had already had a couple people that gave words, and, and I heard the Lord say to me, Jonathan has a word. And Jonathan was sitting in the second row. And I heard God say, Jonathan has a word. But I said to God, I looked over there to see if he was making eye contact with me, because if he was, I, I think I would have went to him. But he had his hands raised, and he was crying and praising. And I said to God, 
he hasn't been here very long, God. Nobody knows him. And I, I don't think it's the right time. And I stepped off the platform. And when, when I stepped off, Bobby grabbed my hand. She said, Jonathan has a word. I'm like, yes, he does. Jonathan, you got a word? He said, yeah, I had a vision last night. I had a vision. I'm glad God speaks twice, man. I'm glad God doesn't give up on us when we don't hear him. You know, he's, he's coming, and, 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 and he's coming at you again through this message to say, look, you can't just sit here and do nothing. You have a calling, and we've got to engage. And in that engaging, we're going to get the power of God that's going to come over our life, because God has power for our lives. In Acts 10.34, Acts 10.34 through 38, Peter opened his mouth and said, in truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all, that you would know which is proclaimed throughout Judea and beginning from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. And look at verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Listen, we need a generation to be raised up who know their God and who are willing to step into his power. And let me tell you, we need to be that generation. We need to be that group of people that says, you know what? I don't know, necessarily know how it's going to happen or why, but I know God's calling me to get out of my comfort zone and walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. And as I do and step into that calling, we're going to see salvation that's going to come to a city. There was a lady in first service this morning sitting right there in the back, and when I came through the, I went down this aisle, a lady grabbed me and she said, Pastor, I've got a friend that I met this week. She is 89 years old, and this week I told her about Jesus, and she received Jesus into her heart this week, and she's here today. She doesn't know anything about church. She doesn't know anything about anything. She said, are we going to go see the father at, the, at church today? And, and she, she was referring to me. She said, well, he's a pastor, but yeah, yeah, you're going to come and meet him. And I was able to meet her and hug her and just tell her, welcome to the kingdom of God at 89 years old. But that doesn't happen if somebody doesn't engage in their calling. That doesn't happen if she doesn't get this, this, hear this voice and say, okay, I'm going to do it. I don't have the power to do it. I don't really have the right words to say, but I hear his calling. I'm stepping into that calling, and when I do, the power is going to be released. You have a calling and gifts, and you were born for greatness. Come on. I hear people say all the time, I'm bored. I've heard people tell me church is boring. I'm like, really? Huh? <laughs> Jesus went about doing good and healing all. There's nothing boring about that. You might have a boring preacher, but let me tell you something. Church should not be boring. You should have a testimony. You should have a smile. You should have a joy. You should have so much excitement about what happened all week long. He said, well, you're up there. You got the microphone. You got the platform. Let me tell you, you got Walmart. You got Target. You think Sam Walton built Walmart so he could have billions of dollars? I'm going to tell you what. God allowed that to be built so you got 24 hours a place to go preach the gospel. See all them goofy people walking around 2 o'clock in the morning, look like zombies in there? It's a, all it is is an opportunity to go share the good news that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. They actually have a website, the people of Walmart. Don't go there. <laughs> Don't look at that, man. Jesus went about doing good and healing all. Let's do what Jesus did. There's nothing boring about that. We gotta pull people out of hell, man. We gotta cast out demons. We gotta stand boldly in our faith. We ought to, we ought to be some kind of different, amen? 
According to God's word, there's power available for all believers. And God wants his power to be released on this earth. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit whom raised, uh, uh, if the spirit who raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through the, his spirit who dwells in you. Acts 1, 8. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. There's greatness in you. And listen to me, when you walk into a room, the atmosphere should change. The atmosphere should change. And I'm not saying you got to be the, the goofy guy that walks in, the party's here now. No, shut up. <laughs> but but, but, but you, ought to, you ought to come into the room and there ought to be like some joy that comes, <laughs> there ought to be some joy that comes into the room, there ought to be some faith that comes into the room, just because you come into that room, that you, have, you ought to have spent so much time with the Lord, that you know when I come in this room, God's going to do something amazing, God's going to touch, God's going to heal, God's going to deliver. Too many people are thermometers when God's called you to be a thermostat. Too many of you are reflecting the temperature of the room instead of changing it. Acts 4.13, and when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were uneducated, untrained men, and they marveled, and they realized they had been with Jesus. Do people realize you've been with Jesus? If you're not walking in your calling, if you don't see every circumstance and every situation as an opportunity. If you see it as a, a challenge or you see it as, you know, the struggle or I'm going through all this, you need to get your, the scales off of your eyes and realize everything you go through is an opportunity for you to shine like Jesus. It ought not to be that every week, week after week, you sit in a church service and go to your car and have not met anybody in this room. How, 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 does it, how did we get there? I mean, it should be that when you get in your car, when Bobby and I go home, that, and it is, like I'm constantly telling her about a family I met, somebody I saw, somebody spoke, I didn't see them for so long, and they were there. I got to see them today, and I got to hug them. I got to tell them how much God loves them. It should be the same for you. Look, at the person you're sitting by might not be the cutest people in the world, and they may have a little odor, but you should, you should be making them feel so special that when they get in their car, they're like, man, that couple that sat down from you, they were so sweet. I saw Jesus all over them. When they were worshiping God, I felt his presence. And do you know what happened? They reached over and touched me and prayed for me. Isn't that a great place to be in? Isn't that a great atmosphere? That's what it should be like, right, Zach? It should be every time we come to church, there are to be people that are around us, behind us, in front of us that leave out and go, man, weren't they the sweetest people? Those were nice people. Those people had been with Jesus. They might say, man, they didn't seem very smart, but they were really nice. <laughs> That's what they said with the disciples. They, weren't un they were untrained, uneducated, but we knew one thing, they had been with Jesus. There was a guy named Kevin. He's a businessman. He's building major complexes all over the country. He came to church last Sunday for the first time. Found us online, Googling churches, wanted to come. Showed up at church and was sitting in the second row. And during the worship service, the person next to him, who he had never met, ever talked to, reached over and put their hands on him and prayed for his shoulder. God healed his shoulder, and, and, and he came to men's group this week. He was here for two weeks, and so he said, man, when, they, when that happened, it was like, I got to go find out more about this church. He heard there was a men's gathering, so he came out to the men's group, and at the men's group, I sat by him, and, and I was just like talking his ear off, and he was just like, after the service, he's texting me, he goes, I can't believe you're the pastor, and you were talking to me. You, you spent so much time with me. Thank you for letting me feel welcome. And this morning, he was here in, in, the, in the service. He goes back to Chicago the, today, this afternoon, getting on a plane. But he was like, I wanted to be here. Why? Because people made him feel so valued and so welcome. People got out of their comfort zones, stepped into their calling, and said, look, I'm here to make your life better. 
I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to pray over you. And every time we leave, we ought to have something that we're going, man, that was awesome. Man, there was somebody there. Do you know when people, when, when, when people are visiting our church, you know why they're coming? You want, you want to know why? They want to know what's going on. Yeah. They're like wanting to know what's going on. They show up thinking, is there something happening in there? And you and I need to be the happening. Yes, yeah, happening in here. It's happening in here. God is in here. If you're a single guy and you're here, don't go to your car after service and go, oh, well, nothing happened again. How about you just start smiling and saying hi to everybody? Huh? I ain't telling you to be a stalker or nothing. I ain't telling you to get all weird, but you can look at their hand if they don't have a wedding band on. Say hi. I ain't trying to be seed to table, the hookup place. I'm trying to be the, I'm trying to be an anointed place where God is at, where you can get in here and find some Christian brothers and sisters that love God, and you gotta get out of your comfort zone to make that happen. You know I'm preaching better than your amen. And yeah. Hell can't stop you, death can't hold you, and sickness can't keep you. Come on. There's power available for every believer. This life isn't about just getting saved and making it to heaven. Huh? It's about getting on this earth and letting the power of the Holy Spirit come over your life and you start being Jesus with skin on. Amen. Church should never be boring. I may be boring, but the church should never be boring. You have a testimony. You have a smile. You, you know what I'm talking, you know what I'm trying to say about your calling is, is you got to conquer your flesh. I don't feel good. Well, I don't care. Conquer. I'm not telling you be fake and put a big cheesy smile on your face. I'm okay. I'm okay. No. I'm saying conquer the flesh, smile, and tell somebody, hi, God bless you. I'm glad you're here. Amen? We have the power to overcome our flesh. We have the power to overcome our feelings. I don't always feel like preaching. I don't always feel like putting together the message, but the, I have to crucify my flesh and say, this is my opportunity to bring the word of the Lord to you to help you get out of your comfort zones and step into your calling. Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give you authority to trample on, on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. I, th I think sometimes people in our lives and churches that we've been to have suppressed the calling of God over our lives. We're afraid if we worship. We're afraid if we give a word. We're afraid if we, if we say something. Now, we were talking about this week. I, don't ever get offended if you come up to me and give me a word, but I say, okay, that was good, and I received that for me, and don't necessarily put you up or give you a microphone. Don't ever be offended. The only thing that ever gets offended is your flesh, but don't ever hold back when God's giving you a word. This isn't that house. There's freedom in here. There's joy in here. There's peace in here. And I'm not wanting to get all crazy and have a word every five minutes and all that stuff, but God gives words, which was what she spoke this morning, that is right in alignment with this message that I'm preaching to you right now. And I, I, I'm just speaking that o over everybody, you know. Uh, get excited. Get radical for God. Step into it, man. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. This is the power. Step into your calling. Sell out. Stop trying to be perfect and trying to qualify yourself. You're never going to do it. You're not good enough. This is his righteousness. This is his faith. I step into his faith. I become what he's called me to be. And in that, I find the grace of God to accomplish everything that he's called me to do. It's not, it's not hard to live for Jesus when you're walking in your calling, when you're walking in that purpose. Amen? It's hard when you start trying to act like everybody else. I think churches have suppressed it. I think we've, we've, we, we've just tried to keep everybody from being too excited. And I'm here to tell you at Destiny Church, get excited. Get happy. Get, use your gifts. Use your, use your words and be an encouragement to somebody around you. If you believe that, give the Lord a praise, everybody.